What's up guys here? I'm on to another reaction here today. Uh, we've got Slipknot. Oh, moving my fucking mic. We've got Slipknot here just dropping, what is this, their third track now off this record? I mean, so, Odd of Life, pretty badass, okay? And then, the last track, which, I think it was good, but it had some elements that were familiar from other pop tunes. Um, it's the Best Day of My Life was like one of the, it was the song that they were kind of taking a little bit of the chorus from. Um, but everything else was great. And I would much rather hear Slipknot play that kind of melody than the other bands. Because, I mean, Slipknot's got riffs. And Slipknot's heavy. And Corey screams. And it's, 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 it's better. It's better in every way. So anyways, guys, uh, very excited about the new Slipknot record. Let's check out this track. This track is entitled... Solway Firth? I believe so. Um, so let's have a listen here. It's already got a million fucking views. It's so crazy. It's been out for like nine hours. All right, here we go. You're a fucking killer, Huey, just like the rest of us. Now, why don't you stop pissing around and tell everybody what this is really all about? Today, up on this hill, I'm counting all the killer killers. They sway as they swarm. A look of gluttons in their eyes, they mutter as the body loses warm. I like this vocal approach, it's interesting. They That's a fucking cool riff, god damn it. Fuck yeah. That's a badass riff right there. Oh, awesome dynamics. Great dynamics. It's abusing the production here. Fuck yeah. This is killer, dude. I love the thrash, man. Nice and gory. The video is pretty awesome too. It's a cool mix.
This song's badass. I'm so digging this shit. This is good shit right here. Fuck yeah. This is a lot of volume three here. And they come back to more groove fucking riffs, dude. Fucking A, man. That was a good track. God damn it. It's not over yet, but it's like 15 seconds. Yeah. Okay. Um, fuck. That was awesome. That was... Very volume three. So I guess when he was talking about Iowa levels of heavy, he really meant volume three levels of heavy. Cause, cause I, so the first album, if we have to like break it down into like its basic genres, the first album was very extreme metal meets new metal. It had the rap metal thing, but it was also a little bit of death metal and a little bit of that underground, almost like guar style metal. So it was very cool and unique to its own thing. And that's why they got so fucking big. Let's, let's be honest. I mean... Wait and Bleed is a radio song, but it's a radio song that's pretty fucking heavy and has a really weird riff that's very unconventional, very um, avant-garde, I guess is the best way to put it, because it's atonal. It's an atonal riff. It's not actually in any sort of key. It's like all over the fucking place. And then you have, you know, uh, Iowa, which was way more leaning towards the death metal and the extreme metal. Way heavier. That was by far their heaviest record. There's nothing even close as far as Slipknot's releases that comes anywhere near it. Other than Eeyore at the end, which is like a secret track off of um, the self-titled. And then we have Volume 3. Now, Volume 3, they came in and they started incorporating a lot more singing, a lot more songwriting, but it was more progressive. And that's where this is going. This is definitely in the prog realm, and it's, it's the heavier side of prog. It's like progressive metal. And it's, it's pretty fucking badass. I dig it a lot. I think they did a great job with all the songs that I've heard uh, on the record. You know, there's the one song that had a little bit of a, of a melodic crossing with other pop songs. But that doesn't mean that the song itself is somehow demeaned. That song is still really expertly well written, had great parts, um, you know, great production. Everything about it was still good. And this was sensational. So, yes, Slipknot. Fucking, what is this, Callway Firth? Is that what it is? Let me look here real quick. Uh, let me check my history real fast. I think it's what it is. Oh, Solway Firth. God damn it, I fucked up the name. There's going to be somebody in the comments, right? <laughs> Anyways, uh, Solway Firth, fucking awesome, sensational track. I am very excited about the next Slipknot record as I've liked everything I've heard. So, until next time, guys. Laters.
last few moments of this wild ride we call life could just be a transition from world to world. It could simply be an astral transformation from one consciousness to another. Fractals are thought to be the connection between us and the other worlds of the multiverse. The life we are asked to follow at death is a fractal. When you are not their conscious, you see fractals. If you're lost in the astral plane of a psilocybin-induced journey, you sometimes see fractals. These broken, seemingly random structures of light are filled with crazy mathematical perfection, yet are far from perfect in the naked eye. Could the doors be ever vast, ever expanding, ever changing multiverse? Be guarded by the light of these fractals. Does immortality truly exist? The only way to know is desire.